I'm from Ericsson, together with my colleague, Dr. Tiao Singh. Um, I think this is the first time Ericsson presenting for, in this type of session with MCMC. Uh, maybe I can introduce myself before Dr. Tiao Singh can take over. So, uh, I'm Afrizal. I'm responsible for the consumer and industry research for Ericsson for South Asia, Oceania and India. Uh, so, Typically, if you've seen Ericsson Mobility Report and a lot of the consumer research coming uh, from Ericsson, it's actually coming from my team. So we want to engage more with MCFMC to share the information that we have based on our global as well as our regional learning. So this is a starting point. We've also engaged with Dr. Nasuken and Paul Charipa to find uh, different avenues that we can continue the discussion with uh, MCMC. So hopefully today during this session, uh, we can share with you our experience with 5G and definitely if, uh, we hope to get more questions from you so that we can continue the discussion. Um, now I would like to pass to Dr. Chao Singh who is our Head of Network Evolution for this region. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon everyone. Afternoon. Hi, afternoon. <coughs> my name is Chao Singh, I'm Malaysian. I sit here. <laughs> Uh, but my role, I cover the uh, whole Southeast Asia, Australia, New Zealand, and also uh, India. <clears throat> so my role is uh, my role in Ericsson is to drive the 5G and IoT for the <coughs> whole region. So uh, day to day, I will meet up with a lot of times with regulator. So last week, I meet up with the Cominfo in Indonesia. The week before, I meet with uh, the DOT in uh, India. So I, I, I meet quite quite a bit of them. Okay. So these are our workshop uh, time to time I will deliver to, to, to the regulator as well. Okay. But today, <coughs> since a learning session, um, the objective is to give a brief overview on what 5G can do, why do we actually need 5G, and when it comes to Malaysia perspective, do we actually need 5G <laughs> in Malaysia? And what we need to do to make it happen, if it is, if, if it is useful. Okay? So we, we, we take a, a, a one step back uh, to open our mind and see what, what we can do. Okay? Feel free to ask me any questions. Okay? Not regarding 5G or so, 4G, 3G, 2G, also you can uh, ask me any questions. Make it very interactive. Uh. <coughs> so, <coughs> of course, making a 5G a reality, the first thing. <coughs> People ask, what to do with 5G? Yeah. 5G is use case driven. If I ask people, why do you actually need 5G? There are so many launch around the world and people working on it. But 5G is really what you want to do with 5G and what cannot be done with 4G today. Okay? We look at two perspectives. <clears throat> when we look at so-called the broadband, we normally look at how fast is the speed and how fast is the response. Okay? So from 3G to 4G, <coughs> the speed very fast. So you hook on to 4G, the speed down the internet very fast. And the response is very fast also. If you hook on to 3G, you open your Facebook, it will take maybe 2-3 seconds before a single image comes out. When you come to the uh, 4G, you click on Facebook, <coughs> the page load faster because of the signaling. But when it comes to 5G, I mean 4G is already quite good. Why you actually need 5G? If you look at the use case, <coughs> 4G, the speed, we are talking about up to 100 megabit per second. Uh, but in average, I think, <coughs> in average, uh, across nationwide uh, or globally, people are only talking about 20, 30 megabit per second in average. If you are further away, in a room, remote area, probably we will get only a few megabit per second. That's expectation. Okay. <clears throat> then 5G come into the picture. 5G is supposed to deliver even a higher speed, up to a gig or a few gig or up to 10 gigabit per second. Okay. With <clears throat> a few techniques, you probably have a lot of spectrum explore more spectrum in mid or higher band so that the speed can go up. The use case that cannot be enabled by 4G today probably <coughs> the 
call it A fiber, right? You offer a fixed wireless access to an area providing, <coughs> let's say, a few hundred meg of speed to the, uh, to, to the uh, over the air if the fiber cannot reach. So this is use case you can do with 4G. But 4G spectrum is less, you're very fast, you're, you're out of capacity. 5G is explore this so-called new, new area. Verizon US, <coughs> they start to explore this area. They already launched. They have some spectrum of 28 gigahertz. Even though the standardization just frozen on December, they say, it's okay, I can launch. Because as long as I have a base station, transmit 28 gig, and I have a terminal <coughs> or some vendor hook on to on top of the roof, so-called line of sight, point to point, I can launch my service. And they start to monetize based on that. Right? <coughs> Fixed wireless access. But then, besides the speed, we are talking about every user using more. Okay? Now, if you do a Facebook or, 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 or video, normal video, 360p, 720p, we are talking about 3 meg <coughs> to 5 megabit per second. Okay? But <coughs> the evolution on service, <coughs> now there is a lot of glasses. The virtual reality glasses start to sell a lot. And this year I go to a mobile world congress in Barcelona. Almost every booth, Sony, Samsung, everyone is talking about augmented reality and virtual reality. This will drive the bit rate probably next year. <coughs> For example, the recent Winter Olympic, what they showcase is, it's Winter Olympic, right? You, you cannot go into the <laughs> skiing area. So what, what they do is, uh, they have a camera to shoot, normally what we see in a uh, 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 TV. But now, Korea Telecom partnered with Ericsson, <coughs> with uh, Intel, they install 360 degree camera. So they put it everywhere. Then the recording transmit to the server and people sitting outside the, the, the stadium they put up a VR glasses as if they are actually sitting inside. When they turn their head, <coughs> they can see as if they are sitting inside a 360 view. This is the new requirement. New requirement that impose uh, <coughs> that required network to be ready. So this is then what is more? If you look at the LTE network or 4G network today, we're talking about latency, how fast the network responds. Right? In average, 4G network, we're talking about 20 millisecond latency. <coughs> you know? but some of the use cases like connected car. <coughs> connected car, you see the L3 connected car, L4 connected car. L3 means, okay, connected car, there are a few, a few so-called steps. The first step is, step one, you have a cruise control. You press cruise control, right? Level one. Level two is on, when you're sleeping, some, some car, they will actually, suddenly you turn this side, they actually do a swing back for safety. Uh, L3, they start to talk to the traffic light, start to talk to the road sign, so that you have information exchange. But L3 connected car, you LTE you can do it for 4G. But L4 connected car, that means now, if the car in front stop, what how, how about the <coughs> the car at the back? The whole system need to feedback to the system and tell the car at the back to stop immediately. So you need very very fast response. You cannot be after one second only tell the other guy to stop the car at the back. That's where you need very, very low latency. They call it the L4. Then you need a 5G network fast enough to respond to tell the other guy to stop the car. So, in summary, the driver for 5G, why we need is to go on higher speed and also a lower latency. Okay? <coughs> if we look at, based on these two type of <coughs> um, application operator around the world start to find the sweet spots to launch it's not that they just launch for fun 
because they find a business case, they can make money, there's people using it. In US, Sprint, Verizon, T-Mobile mainly focus on fixed wireless access. Their use case is wherever the fiber cannot reach, uh, can reach, they'll provide fiber. When the fiber stops at one place, the rim that they don't have a fiber, that is the sweet spot to provide so-called air fiber. So the fiber will come to the so-called uh, uh, spot, then you extend the other ring with fiber. Okay? So Verizon's buying buy the uh, 28 gig uh, with a price of 3 billion US dollar for a few years of lifespan of the, uh, the spectrum uh, from a company which is going to a bankrupt called Straight Path. So they find a business case, if I buy this company, I have the spectrum, I launch a service for a few years, my outright is okay. The other two <coughs> operators in the, Vodafone, in the UK, Vodafone UK, that launch, uh, they committed to launch, and Swisscom, they are the first few. Right? So if you look at AT&T, <coughs> how the 5G, the real 5G looks like. So when it comes to the spectrum, they go on on 28 and 39 gigahertz of spectrum. In each chunk of the spectrum, they secure 400 meg. They have 400 meg, then they deploy a side 150 meter away, they'll get roughly 1.2 gigabit per second of speed. It's quite good. 9 milliseconds of latency, hundreds of connected users. Which is quite good. This is life. Then what is next? <coughs> There's a lot of operator partners also. Okay. Uh, that the Ericsson actually work at and they actively explore use cases. You know? Unlike the in US and UK, uh, this operator is not uh, officially launched yet because of Spectrum. They are waiting for some Spectrum option, some decision on the uh, Spectrum to be allocated, then they will launch something. <coughs> the partner we have in Japan is NTT, SoftBank, KDDI, in China, China Mobile, Unicom, all, all, the, all the big players. Within this region, uh, we sign MOU with Singtel, uh, where, where <coughs> we do something on this uh, 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 Scania uh, truck platooning, so that uh, from, from the Johor side, uh, if the, the truck wants to send something to the, uh, the port, the, the, a few trucks actually can you know, follow each other with one driver, so you save energy and save a manpower. So that is uh, some of the initiative that they are, they are doing there. Bharti Eta in uh, India, we set up a lab there. In Australia, of course, uh, they, are, they, are, they are probably will launch uh, something very, uh, very fast. <coughs> so um, apart from, apart from uh, all the MOU, this is like what I mentioned just now, the Winter Olympic that in Korea. Okay? So, we, uh, so the 5G system will look like this. There's a pole, then there's some radio there. This is a 28 gigahertz of radio. <coughs> if you look like this, it's not that big. No? Um, they come with uh, many, many antennas, 64T, 64R antenna, and um, a lot of capacities. Um, so this is uh, like what, <coughs> what I mentioned uh, in, the, in the game. They put out many cameras, then they do an AR, VR. Not only that, they, only, they also do the uh, Connected car or trial in in, uh, in Korea also. Uh, so this is this is happening for the last uh, the last few months. Then Malaysia perspective for Malaysia, how should we actually do the five G? Okay, besides use it for AR VR, then <clears throat> when people launch five G, they look at your capex investment and your opex saving plus what revenue we are getting. So most operators today, they launch 5G based on capex saving. <coughs> if I launch 5G, I have more spectrum, I enable some use, uh, use cases, but I have a lot of capacity. If I have a, a lot of capacity, that means I build less site. So if less site, that means I pay less rental. So launch 5G in the existing site with more spectrum is important for the operator in Malaysia to not 
continue to build so many sites and savings of cost. The delay of spectrum, when they don't have a spectrum like in India, they have to build many sites because the site is full, they have to build another site. So this is the main motivation to launch any new frequency or even 5G at this stage. We receive a lot of tender requirement. Everything is all about densification, site densification avoidance. When you mentioned that you don't have to build many sites, meaning using existing spectrum that they have, right? Yeah. So using existing spectrum they have, if there are more spectrum, they build more layers, so they don't don't build another site. Okay. Uh, we do some simulation in UK. Whatever spectrum they have, until twenty twenty, there are twenty percent of the site will run out of capacity. So twenty percent of the site <coughs> they need to do something. Either they split the site or they build new site. So they find that the business case in order to avoid this 20% of the site to build more site surrounding to handle all the demand, they decided to go for 5G. <coughs> Try the 5G, get the frequency but in a single site, just build another layer to do 5G <coughs> so that you're still paying the same rental for the same site. So there's a business case on that. Huh? Most of the document we receive during the tender is all based on this type of use cases. Where, uh, yeah. yeah, this I will cover. Okay, I will cover which frequency that is justifiable in terms of coverage in in order to achieve this type of benefit. Huh? In short, it's three point five. Of course, uh, there will be a lot of debate. I will debate that <coughs> in, the, in the next few slides. Okay? So, but then, after, after you talk about cost saving, right? But then that doesn't drive things forward. Uh, we also look at uh, uh, work with uh, analysts to say, okay, let's in Malaysia, what are the segments that can use the 5G to make more? Uh, improve the society and improve the uh, revenue of the operator. The three side, the three segment that we are seeing. <coughs> so Malaysia, we foresee that up to twenty twenty six, there will be a three billion US dollar revenue pool to grab from different different segments. The top three segment is manufacturing, <coughs> is from energy, and also for the public safety. Of course, there are more like healthcare, public transport. A lot, right? But the top three segment is is three segment. Okay. But what to do with this three segment? Right? <coughs> For example, manufacturing, right? How operator will launch something? Then they will have to think. If I launch something five G for manufacturing, who I should sell to, and what is it used for? It is all about the industry control and automation service. So if Let's say a uh, Maxis or Cellcom they launch something, they should target factory automation. If I install the devices of 5G in the factory, it's supposed to feedback the process, let's say a production line, fast enough to make me uh, to, to, to take the, con uh, the the system to make a decision and feedback <coughs> to to give a better uh, utilization or or better. Uh, optimization on the whole process. There's a value on it. So it needs to be fast feedback and do a decision and, and modify the, the, the process. We're talking about this <coughs> automation system and also operator can sell a few devices, uh, sell to the uh, uh, factory and plan and design the system. Uh, this is where the segment that operator will make money based on <coughs> our industry research. Uh, so we, we we do a global so-called uh, 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 survey and prediction. Then the second second part is the smart grid. Smart grid is, is talking about the the, the transmit the, the power line. If the power line sometimes you have a search, <coughs> right? You have a search on electricity, especially if you have a lot of electric car. If you have a lot of electric car in the coming years, people start charging the car, charging the car in certain spot. But charging a car draw a lot of electricity. Uh, one use case that the, the people actually start to think of is 
if this area people start to charge car, then the, the electric tariff will be go higher. Encourage people actually move to a new area that has a less usage. Go and charge their car there, electric car. Okay? But then this has to be very fast, the build application so that uh, you, uh, the whole nation no need to overproduce power uh, and use a system to get people <coughs> to distribute and use power in different spots. Third one is of course public safety. Public safety of course is urban and infrastructure security. You need very fast deployment on CCTV or 360 uh, uh, camera everywhere. Just like in Taiwan, every corner you have a CCTV. But then uh, a lot of cabling required. In order to fast build on this 5G, you will put a 5G base station, cover a lot of places, high capacity, CCTV everywhere, you feed back to the centralized system. So these are the three segments that we, we see that huh, it, 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 it potentially a benefit from the issue. <clears throat> of course, when we talk to operator, if the operator get the money, they shouldn't only provide connectivity. That means I just don't sell the just sell the SIM card. If I sell the SIM card, then just a SIM card. Operator need to first make the system so that I own not only a selling SIM card, but somebody actually take the SIM card, make some business model, right? And do a business right on the operator's uh, connectivity. Right? So they need to <coughs> move on and service and development. <coughs> and also, if they are creative enough, they should come up with certain application. So there is a big opportunity for operators to move forward. Like I say, <coughs> 5G, to summarize what I was saying uh, just now, is all use case driven. Enhanced mobile broadband like this ARVR is definitely the, uh, the, the first case. If you have a look at the amount of money, addressable market. Enhanced mobile broadband is the biggest segment. The second segment is the fixed wireless access, like I said. Then the third one is after you can do your basic ROI based on these two segments, now we are talking about the machine type of communication, right? Like the factory automation <clears throat> depends whether they can just sell the SIM card or they make the full application. So there is a different range of money that they are, they are able to tap on. <clears throat> but what is next? As I mentioned here, the most of the uh, use case that we actually receive from document is based on cost reduction. Densification avoidance. Then <clears throat> for 5G, if it is a full flash deployment, we are talking about cost per gigabyte to reduce 10 times with 5G. The production cost per bit per, per bit. Yeah. But how to achieve how to achieve a, a very low cost? Okay, there's two factors. One factor is <coughs> enough spectrum. <coughs> if you have a lot of spectrum, that means the equipment, okay, the equipment that operator purchase rather than just serve 10, 20 <coughs> megahertz. Now the equipment purchase for 5G, maybe they serve 100 megahertz or 200 megahertz. So the cost to serve the, the single block of frequency much, much more lower. The simple theory. The second one is utilization, right? With 5G, utilization will be higher. Anyone actually can push the utilization of the 5G, take up a lot more handset and support, utilization better, <coughs> then the cost will further go down. <coughs> Maybe I should uh, go to this one first. Okay. So then they come to the frequency assignment. Okay. Frequency assignment is very important. If we look at the low band, less than three gig, 
You have 1800, you have 2.3, 2.6. The band is relatively <coughs> small. Okay? If you chop it to many operators, every operator will get 10, 20 megabit per second. Uh, uh, 10, 10, 20 megahertz of spectrum. So, you look at 10, 20 megahertz of spectrum for operators. That's a 10. The speed we are getting is around 200 megabit per second. <coughs> right? You have more spectrum, you aggregate them together, you double the spectrum, you double the speed. Simple theory. But that is that much you can do because that band standardized is only per operator 10 20 megahertz. If we move up to the mid band between 3.5 to 4.5, this band, this band is bigger. <coughs> We have uh, 300, 400 megahertz of spectrum, or even more. You will speed by a few operators. Optimally, people can get 50 to 100 megahertz of spectrum. <coughs> if we move even higher, up to more than 6 gig, let's say 28 gig, that's a, that <coughs> then every operator probably get more than 400 megahertz of spectrum. The speed, uh, let's say they get 600 megahertz. Yeah, 10 gigabit per second. So there is a direct correlation between the speed and also the spectrum band. <coughs> Why I'm saying that in 5G, they will expect lower cost per bit. It's a simple, more bandwidth, the higher the peak rate they get. But for radio equipment, one piece of radio equipment, they can do how many times of capacity. <coughs> A more spectrum, more capacity. So, a single piece of hardware will definitely house more gigabyte. It is uh, not not a rocket science. So then, spectrum allocation large enough, continuous is important in order to further achieve achieve the cost per bit uh, reduction. <clears throat> but then, come to the spectrum, okay? Um, based on all the momentum around the world, um, we look at the, the early <coughs> launch like US, Korea, Japan, China, India, or the UK. Uh, this is how they allocate, right? Uh, some is just option, like just a uh, UK, the option 3.4 3 to 3.6, mm. around 200 meg of spectrum. Uh, in, in, <coughs> in China, they're talking about 3, uh, 3, point, 3, point 3 to 3.6, and they're talking about 4.4 <coughs> 4 to 4.500 back like then, and 200 meg on 4.4 to 4 uh, uh, to 5. Uh, Korea, Japan, they're talking about 3. Point something, right? Uh, even on 20, 20 over gigahertz, there are momentum there, okay? But this is only a few countries. Uh, GSA actually come out with quite a good report. They go and survey globally, wherever the, uh, the regulator come out with a consultation paper, so they capture the, capture the, uh, uh, the requirement. So they, uh, they come up with uh, some statistic. Which country and how many country actually mention their mm -hmm. plan to do certain thing on certain plan. So if you look at it, the highest is around this 3.4 to 3.6 is the highest. 3.6 to 3.8 is the second highest. The third one is around uh, 2.4 to 2.9 in this range. Uh, What's the difference between 2500 and 2600? Uh, so 2600 is um, by, by definition is the, the FDD, the FDD band, band 7. Uh, then the uh, 2500 is the, uh, the whole uh, band 41 or band 38. 2500, the uh, definition they put out is, is the whole chunk. The GSA definition. Yeah, the GSA definition. Yeah, because I think generally it's slightly different when you say 2500 or 2600. 20, okay, 25, uh, 26 is, is actually spread spread across the whole thing, like 25, 26. Even if you Consider the CPT band plan is 26, mm. so 
So that that I think that's for education. I just want to understand. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <coughs> so in their definition, twenty six is 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 the FTP. FTP band, the device the band 41, which is the, the TDP band. So, <coughs> yep. So that does, if we're looking at it, potential mainstream that actually will be coming for 5G, uh, based on global interest, whatever being launched, and whatever being considered globally, based on GSA report. I mean, you can go and search internet, like GSA, then the report will come up. <coughs> you just put it into a nicer format. Uh, it's around this area and also this area. Of course, there are some US, they are talking about this 337. Huh? This is because if it is based on fixed wireless access uh, use case, whatever frequency you get, as long as point to point, you're okay, right? <coughs> fixed wireless access uh, uh, use case. But when it comes to the mobile broadband band, people actually sell the handphone then you have to really see which uh, spectrum getting the most harmonized and a lot of manufacturing manufactured that first if based on the, the handset right? so we have to be careful where, where we want to launch a lot of operators ask me should I actually launch on the, this side based on the 700, 800, 900 or even the 1800, 2.1 eventually it will a lot of countries, especially on the L band, fourteen hundred. Mm. <clears throat> yeah. So you can launch something, but keep in mind that I go back to my use case. If the existing band is running on four G, why you go and touch it for five G? What benefit you actually getting and launch the five G in the existing band? The spectral efficiency compare 4G and 5G in the existing band, 5G will give you 20% more. That's it. Okay? That's it. Standardization as low as 5 meg. Highest? Yes, as low as 5 meg. Okay. Um, but then uh, based on like this uh, 3.5 minimum from standardization is 10 meg. 10 meg, so it's, it is worse than the 4G. 4G can go 20 meg. Okay. When you say 5 meg, it's based on 3GPP's. Uh, 3GPP standardization. Okay. Because why? I think uh, you, I mean, I think you are much more well versed than me on that because ITU standard it's a minimum of 100 meg, right? No, uh, so yeah, for, for LTE, MPG, for LTE, no, for MPG 20, meaning for 5G, yeah. So that, that's why I'm quite uh, surprised when you say minimum 5G on 5 meg yeah. because maybe in terms of equipment for the uh, for 5G, 3GPP standard, yes, minimum 5 meg, but you won't achieve that so called 5 g speed or whatever it is because that's why I think the definition by IT for IT is at least a minimum bandwidth of 100 meg yeah. so, so differentiate between 4 g and 5 g <coughs> exactly so there is the two part to address okay the latency part and also the uh, capacity part the speed part uh, so if you don't have 100 meg you have a 5 10 meg based on the system design how fast the system communicates with each other you achieve a fast response. Let's say a connected car. When you stop, they just communicate to the cloud and tell the, uh, the, the car at the back, you don't need so much of a bandwidth. 5 times Mac, 
is probably enough based on the system response. You just need a ping to send to the bank, <coughs> right? So this is where uh, the, the small bandwidth is required. But this is, but these are our use case like connected car. When is it going to happen? When? So you don't need that urgency then? You don't need the urgency, okay? Okay, if that's the case, I mean, going back to your use cases, right? You're saying that <coughs> there's five countries doing, uh, I mean, commercialization on 5G. But their use cases are all on FWA. FWA okay. and also EMBB use case. Yeah, but most of it, US and whatnot, Australia, FWA. FWA is fixed wireless access. Yeah. But the definition of 5G, this G or the fifth generation, is based on generation of mobile. So why the first use cases are all on fixed wireless access, which actually you don't need, because you have fixed band, other fixed bands, and not for mobile. Because this one, two, three, four, five Gs are all for mobile, and we are going to identify IMT. I think that the Nora's concern is on the new band, mm -hmm. because all this hype saying that about five G, it's all for mobile. But now, when we are doing all the studies, it's all about fixed, which you can address in other bands. So what? Why is that there's a conflict in that sense in terms of implementation and so called study? <coughs> okay. If we look at if we look at the uh, uh, the evolution of the spectrum in terms of use case and this, okay. Uh, the whole world talk about five G, a connected car, this and that, right? But it will take industry to collaborate, you have to have the car to talk to the car. When the car talk to the car, they cannot just talk. They need a server, a collaboration. It will take many years to come. Okay, to be frank, it will take many years to come. Then, we come back to the question that should we wait until those use case actually come? Only we do 5G. And you use your existing band to do. But a lot of operators doesn't think that way. Okay? Uh, and anyhow, I'm building a system to address that. If I can do it a bit early and justify my business case based on the never ending demand of data, in the next five years, I need 10 times more data. Okay? So while I'm waiting for this connected car to come, I build my network 5G ready to cultivate the industry to build application right on my system. But I still need to make money based on that. So the first use case will be that's efficient avoidance to justify their business case. And <clears throat> of course. But then again, it's just justifying something which is not in the main direction. Yep, exactly. So when it comes to the, the <coughs> when it comes to the 28 gigahertz, when it comes to the 28 gigahertz, okay, when they have the new spectrum. Should they go for 4G or should they go to 5G? A lot of operators ask me, then let's say on a, a 3.5, if this option now, UK just finish option, should they actually go 4G or 5G? I, I also think of this question. If I use 4G, the only thing I justify is to continue sell my SIM card for 4G mobile broadband, and I didn't get any reven additional revenue. If I sell 5G, at least people use it for mobile broadband or fixed wireless utilization. At the same time, the latency is good enough. I can cultivate more use case that I can sell more, the revenue. So there is a revenue part rather than capex saving and opex saving. That's why the, 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 the world is moving towards 5G on the new band. But when it comes to the existing band, should I actually do 4G or 5G? If we look at the five, the, the band like exactly what, what you're saying, it's still based on mobile broadband uh, type of use case. So they uh, do a 5G in a new band. Existing band, I didn't find a motivation why I should do a 5G in the existing band. Because connected car is not happening yet. So existing band was still on 4G until the time is right. So you're saying right now, I mean, it's all about so called. Uh, just potential demand, but there's no real demand. Yeah, potential demand, but there's no real demand. So there's no urgency for that. The urgency is to reduce 
the reduce the uh, dense circuit. It's chicken and egg, right? Because, the urgency. Because the regulator, I think we have to look the balance of the part. Yeah? Mm. You can't just identify and then we don't use it. Yeah, because I mean, three point four, three point six. You got heavy usage. Simple as that. But around the world, people have been pushing for that. But as you mentioned, that you know, all these applications need like what ten, twenty years. Who knows, right? It's a chicken and egg, lah, right? If you don't have a system, then things will not happen. Just like China. I think if you get a new bank, you should do five G. But the new bank won't happen. So the new band, which uh, which uh, can be happen very easily, is to find whatever band which is harmonized. For example, if you feel that three point five, you start, right? Then you start with this twenty eight first. At least the five G, you give opportunity for the industry to start to build use cases. Okay, you like. Don't have problem with this band. Yeah, exactly. The higher right. band, you don't have problem. Mm. So then, then they come back to the uh, the use cases, right? If let's say it is short distance, okay, then we explore what to use in the short distance. For example, in Korea, they are also testing the connected car for outdoor, outdoor environment. Since the car is only outdoor, then the test is quite stable. Connected car using twenty eight, but then uh, the drawback is you need to build a bit more size. I think if you look at the inside distance is around 200-300 meters. Yeah. But cars are moving quite fast. When This way, anyhow, they are struggling, right? Anyhow, they are struggling if they don't have spectrum, they don't have 5G, and uh, people are complaining speed are slow. What they need to do, they just add side, just like Indonesia and then Korea. Every 80 meters, there is a side, there is no choice, right? Uh, if people complain a lot of traffic, they have to build side, <coughs> right? Because so, you have how many millions of people? That's why in uh, Indonesia, Indonesia, every operator is uh, losing money. Yes, yeah, 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 so <coughs> yeah, so <coughs> in a, so that that's why they find a good business case to build a denser network, okay? Because, you know, because they, they have a lot of revenue, you know, a lot of people actually using it in a small area, so they manage the uh, the, the capex in, in that that's where the ROI is okay, right? <coughs> but then for operators. If there is a choice, okay, you have a more frequency, launch a certain frequency to offload. This is what the, the industry is actually promoting. Not to say uh, you launch something on the 3.5 or, or even a 28, 
uh, then you address those connected car. Okay? As I mentioned, it will take a few years to come. But at least operator no need to build more site. I put up a 28 gig or 3.5 gig as a, a ecosystem mature, yeah, handset coming in. We are talking about offload. So the 3.5 is a deploy in an existing grid. We are talking about 95% of the traffic can be offloaded to the 5G. If you are deployed on 28 gig, then the offload can be lessened. But still there is an offload. So operator built business case based on this. If I have a 5G system, in order to get the first ROI, I get the frequency, I get the mobile broadband use case to do offloading by not building another site. At the same time, I build some system to sell to the factory so that they can have a fast response system to optimize their factory manufacturing mm -hmm. and generate more revenue. They become a, a, a chicken and egg. If you give a frequency, they cannot use uh, just ask them, oh, 38 gig, you go and do the factory, but it take take a few years and they need to pay for the, uh, uh, for, for the frequency. Then things are not moving. So how they justify the business case is, ah, anyhow my traffic is increasing and this ecosystem able to help me to offload the traffic. <coughs> Whatever I save by less building, less site, I can invest in, in those areas to explore new, new use cases. This, this is the whole hope. But in Singapore and UK, <laughs> that's the thinking behind. So, so I, I'm not, I'm not saying that you, you, you have to allocate a 3.5 on day one, okay? But then, uh, uh, we, we, we do a one step back uh, in order to cultivate the ecosystem to grow. Maybe uh, start with 28, uh, get the operators to, uh, to have a business case to offload a little bit. At the same time, <coughs> experience how fast is the system. So how Singapore do is, we set up a lab there, the Singtel set up a lab, buy a few equipment on 28 and get all the industry player to come in to experience how fast is it, how you actually make things, uh, make next thing uh, a new application. You're talking about the connected car? Any other thing, like connected factory, uh, connected car you need outdoor. Uh, so those 28 gig, you, you do something on indoor. Uh, oh, indoor. But you something doing on the lab, right? Yeah. On what frequency? Uh, which one? The, uh, the, the one we do, uh, we, we do with uh, Cellcom is 28 gig. 28 gig? Exactly, right? So 28 gig, if let's say, uh, locate something for operators to play around, see how fast is the system, uh, try to generate a little bit on the use cases, then the industry will start to develop. I mean, uh, like, um, I, I just come back from Indonesia, la, okay? they have an Asian game uh, uh, by August, right? So I talked to the regulator, they say, okay, now I locate the frequency 28 gig for, uh, for three <coughs> months. So that during Asian game, everyone bring in something to showcase what 5G can do. Uh, last Monday, I heard they extend for one year, 28 gig system, uh, frequency, give the operator to jointly develop use case for a year. And after that, they will decide how to move forward. I think it's probably a, it's a good approach. Indonesia has the same problem, 3.5. So I said, never mind, 3.5, you can't, you can't locate it. Let's start with the other one. 
when I talk to Australia, they say, ah, 3.5, and we have 3.4, 3.4 and 3.5, but we want 3.6 and 3.7. So they have a different struggle. How do they, how they actually vacate the 3.6 and 3.7? They'll look at 5 gig to the satellite. They say, ah, look at your utilization now, 3.5, you're not using that many. Uh, don't bullshit me in Australia. You only use it in the desert. In a city like Sydney, uh, Melbourne, stop using the 3.5. Okay, because you have to fix. In the desert, yes, you use. So they start to do zoning. The zoning uh, in the city, 3.5 you cannot use. Use for mobile broadband from 3.6 to 3.8. Outside the city, yeah, exactly. Malaysia maybe. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I can comment uh, one thing about what China is doing. Uh, for China, 5G they see it as part of their industry for the zero planning. So what they have done uh, in creating the, the use case and demand for 5G, they are working with various industry to transform. Today, if we think about the industry in China, it's mainly because of low cost. Um, so they want to transform, to modernize it, and 5G is one of the critical uh, uh, element for for their industry for the zero setting. Please don't get me wrong, I'm into 5G. Mm. Ah. <laughs> 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 it's how 5G is going to crack at me. Yeah, I, we know that it's not easy. That's why we, we are creating this discussion. So to prepare for that journey, because I think based on the learning that we have in the different markets, I think we just want to create that avenue of conversation. It, it will not be easy, but I think if we don't do it, uh, then we will miss an opportunity. Because today, if you look at our industry, because if you think about the benefits of 5G, it's not just for the consumer, it's also for the businesses and the society. From the business point of view, if we, our, our industry today rely a lot on foreign lab labors. That will not last for long. At some point, we need to modernize the industry so that that we can compete with other markets. We can't uh, depend on low, cheap low cost labor. We need to transform it. And 5G will be one of the elements. Where, when to do it, I guess that's something that we can discuss. But we just need to prepare for it. I think that's why we want to have that conversation. That's exactly, don't get me wrong. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying that uh, 3.5 is a members a readiness <coughs> or spectrum for, so that the industry actually is moving forward with new, uh, new, new application based on on the spectrum that are available. Yeah. <coughs> but 28 gig is um, <coughs> you need to build like site, la, right? Like 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 you mentioned that uh, this is a way that <coughs> if uh, only cover outdoor, right? Outdoor. Um, so far, how many cities use them? Start to use them, right? In the city, different city, how many sites on 4G can actually uh, deploy uh, for 5G. So they do some survey, some city is only 40% can be used and <coughs> they need to build another 60% of the site. Some of the city like 81% can be used and uh, they build another 20% of the site because the cover everywhere on 28 gig. So 28 gig to certain extent is good to cultivate cultivate the uh, application and the use case for indoor or industry or factory but in long run in order to have anything outdoor like you say a reliable you still need a mid band okay you still need a mid band if you only uh, focus on the high band then this will happen that there are quite quite a number of sites need to be built uh, based on Continuous coverage, reliable outdoor connections. Yeah. Uh, what's what's Ericsson's view on that 28 gig? I know that we have prior of Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, uh, Indonesia. Uh, the intercept distance of 200 meter was based on studies in European countries, China, Japan, Korea, which are non tropical countries. When you implement it in Malaysia, that would certainly go, I think, more than, less than half than of the site distance of building a greens. So how that will affect, because you see the site is a little more too small, would suddenly it goes from 81% to 0%? Because 
Because yep. it rains, I mean, it rains a lot here, especially. Right? All this was the country. Mm. Yes, we did try it. It's not wrong. It's just in, indoor. We don't do tests when it rains, how far do we go? Because if I remember correctly, during the trial, when one, one, one of our people just crossed the part of the antenna within just a few meters, the speed dropped simply. Yep. Yeah. So how does that going to affect the mutation? I think the least in the range of time to be 20 was about 24.25. It's around 24, 28. So that will affect the mutation as well. Yeah, it will impact. Um, that's why, that's why in the standardization they come up with this uh, non-standalone, so that every UE will actually have an LTE connection and also has the uh, 5G connection, dual connectivity. All the signaling will still go back from to a 4G, and in those are critical communication, you need a 5G connection. Then the range need to be very very small. But the first use case, like like I say, higher speed ARVR. The latency is not the critical part, it's just the offload, just like this slide. How much traffic can be offload? Huh? If you are able to hook on to 5G, you have a good quality VR. You fall back to 4G, you have a lower quality of VR. Then when it comes to the critical communication, you really need to have a reliable uh, uh, inter-site distance shot. If you don't have uh, a lower band, so, so the first use case on 28 or 3.5 <coughs> is for smaller area indoor uh, uh, application. When you really need this, all this connected car, then the existing band, for example, 700, okay, you will use simultaneously for 4G and 5G because the 5G part will adjust everywhere. Uh, but whether you want to do uh, a 700 for 5G today, there's no business case do it because still mobile broadband 4G is used is but it's a better use for 700. For 5G maybe later on when you have a connected car it's good to turn it on. But for 5G now a smaller area 20 gig 2.5 is the most useful ecosystem you have to wise and you build a very use case based on this. Uh, when the connected car comes then a lower frequency will be more applicable. <coughs> It's not an easy discussion, okay? When it comes to the operator, every, every uh, so-called use case, you have to go through a business case. If there is no business case, then the thing will not happen. Devices, the frequency that I mentioned <coughs> is coming, okay? Uh, 38, 3.5, 4.5 is coming, okay? If we are not looking at all this uh, frequency, the other frequency will not have devices. As simple as that. <coughs> That's why I say in the high band is between these two, in the mid band is between these three. Can you explain the FPGA? <coughs> yeah. So before, uh, so this is uh, FPGA is uh, those uh, testing device. It is like a development board. After they do the development board, they will come out with <coughs> the signal. That means the really print on the, uh, the circuit. That means the chipset is ready right, to be sold to uh, the OEM uh, company. So at least we know that uh, they are start to have some development board already last year. They already manufactured the ASIC already because standardization frozen here. They take half a year to really come out with the ASIC the printed circuit board. After they have the printed circuit board, they can sell it to the vendor to make a modem, to make a handphone. So if you look at it, the circuit board already ready with this, this frequency. Uh, the rest of the frequency is not happening yet. Then the, the devices will come. Then it's a matter of time when the devices will come. <coughs> So 28 gig, like I say, is, is already available because it's based on fixed wireless uh, terminal type of use case. It's already come. The next time come, we are 3.5. Then uh, the phone will come. Our, our type of phone will come. It's not a smaller, smaller chipset. So eventually everything will come. 
So that's why I say main ecosystem is, is around all these frequency plans. Of course, it's driven by <coughs> when the 5G in which country will happen first. US, in 2023, <coughs> there is a forecast of maybe 30-40% of connection will be in 5G. Korea, Japan will be this one. Our region, Southeast Asia, it will come from the small. <coughs> so, whatever we are doing, we still have to look at what China and US is doing. So, if we look at the China, so this is how they allocate. In China, they allocate 3.3 to 3.4 for indoor usage. Uh, 3.4 to 3.6 is for a split between uh, uh, 3 4 operators and 4.8 to 5 200 megahertz is for allocation. <laughs> uh, Japan, they chop it in this way 4 operators, but then uh, the bandwidth, not, not like everyone has a luxury of 100, but they will start with 40, 80, 40. China Mobile get 80, Google one. Uh, sorry, that is a uh, entity get uh, at 81 the rest will get 40 at least they start something right in uh, korea it's better everyone get 100 100 100 So they, they look at the, uh, the rate of change <coughs> of the handphone and those that, uh, also look at the, uh, the spectrum when each country actually has a spectrum. Uh, so there is an announcement like in the UK there is an option already. So we know it will happen. In uh, Korea, Japan, we know they actually option something. So the forecast is based on whatever chipset is coming, spectrum is available. Then. Uh, then you have some subscriber there. Mm. Uh, if uh, some country like uh, like India, the spectrum is not available yet, right? We, we know it will be late. It will be late. Then the forecast will be late. <coughs> okay. So the trial around the world is moving towards this direction. Okay, in this direction now. If you want to correlate the speed versus the spectrum, if you target one gig of spectrum, the, you target 60 meg. You need a 60 meg in order to get one gig. Uh, if you have uh, any operator less than uh, 60 meg, whether it's uh, 4G or 5G, you cannot get one gig. You just have less operator. <laughs> exactly. Maybe less operator make good use of. Uh, the spectrum, then everyone get 60 meg, like in Singapore, right? Yeah, they have more than 60 meg, they can launch a gigabit network everywhere. Which is not, not, not a secret, lah, right? If, if you have more than 10 gig, the next target, then you need a 600 meg. <coughs> 600 meg spectrum per operator, then one operator will launch a 10 gig. Because uh, come 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 to the UE, the UE will be just four by four or eight by eight. That's it. There will be no so many antennas, right? Uh, so if we four by four, you need a sixty meg to get a one gig. Six hundred meg to get ten gig. <coughs> yeah. So the testing around the world up to now, hundred over testing, it is one to five gig is quite a lot. People are testing this speed, so they are still using around uh, 100 meg, like you say, 100 to 200 meg carrier region. Some if they test on uh, 28 gig, then they'll get more than 10, 10, 10 gig, 10 gig, 20 gig, 50 gig. But most of the testing is based on uh, less than uh, one to five gig. Thank you. 
If you're 100 meg, based on 4x4 MIMO, 1.7 gig. Uh, you got 2x2, two two, 800 meg. 800 megabit per second. 4x4 four four MIMO, 1.7. So I think testing 4G baseline, uh, 5G baseline 4x4, uh, 100 meg, you get 1.7. Theoretical uh, peak, uh, you can get a peak. How far does it go for the big point four spectrum? It can um, almost equivalent to 2.6, uh, LTE 2.6. Because there is a beam forming, so you can actually stretch to 2.6. Same, same distance as the two pieces. It's quite good. That's why when we do this, uh, uh, like, like this, right? We're putting a grid on the LPE 2.6. You see how much is the offload of the 3.5? You're almost uh, reaching 95% coverage of the 2.6 because of there is a beam forming more narrow band. So 3.5 and 2.6 are coverage almost the same. Yeah. This one, this one potentially also. <coughs> if if you, you can't touch this one, maybe this one, right? But if you look at the uh, number of operators that are interested, three point three to three point four, not many lah. Not many. There's still potential, right? Indonesia talking about it, three point three to three point four. But then, uh, whether you should allocate now, you have to wait and see because it's not the main ecosystem. Most of the ecosystem will start on 3.4. You have to play around, you have a device like I say, it's based on this, this area. If you can't get something on this, you play around with this. After you play around with this, if the ecosystem starts to mature on this one, maybe you can allocate a bit on this one. But there's a chance. So the, the, the I mean the standardization just frozen uh, December last year. So I think in a year time, that means from December to December, we live a system coming up. So we are we are launching something big, maybe by quarter four, with a few operations in Singapore and So there will be a live system. So Malaysia landscape, right? We're looking at the three super three area. I think this area, 4G is still important. Okay, 4G is still important. <coughs> like I said, the mobile broadband cases is either this one or this one. So we have a we have to choose the spectrum. If you have something here, if 50 to 100 megahertz per operator, you get more than a gig. If you have a 60 meg. Because there is a 100 to 200 meg in this area. Use case, enhanced mobile broadband, you get close to 90% coverage. If it is in this one, the peak can go even higher, more than a 110 gig, a smaller coverage, then you can do something. So, it will be either this one or this one. It will not start with the existing plan. <coughs> of course, like I say, the 3.5 <coughs> is covered by C band. Okay? Um, so it's not only Malaysia infected, Indonesia, Thailand, even India a bit. It's all in China, they are, they are, they are receiving the uh, satellite signal. Uh, depends on whether you can migrate them out uh, eventually, <coughs> or else it will be always there. Right? Satellite. Is it impacting this one? If you launch something, no impact. If you launch something here, no impact. But then, if you have an earth station, 
if you deploy something, there is an impact. Okay? Then what Australia do is how to minimize this impact. MBN has a 3.5. So what they do is ah you need to look at 3.5 you say you use, but where actually you use? Maybe yeah, I mean, so we need to somehow look at where is the location of all these uh, satellite fish. So what Australia do is identify where is this, this area, then they deploy the base station. As long as you deploy, you measure the signal close to here, not impacting so much, you're okay to use. But first, we need to identify the utilization, where actually this, this thing Located and how much it is being used. <coughs> okay, sorry, when you mentioned that, uh, since you are saying about Malaysian scenario, uh, that one is Australian. Mm. Are you aware that the, the vast deployment of this in Malaysia? Yeah, I'm aware that. Yeah. <coughs> because in Australia, it's, it's much more controlled location, it's much easier to group them up and put them somewhere. The rest for us in Malaysia is everywhere. We've got a lot of petrol stations down there that we use it. So I'm not sure any countries that has the same experience but trying to do 3.5. Singa actually Singapore they they, they they don't have the indicators 3.5. Yeah, they don't don't have so many. Yeah. They actually have a few. But see Singapore doesn't own a satellite. Mm. We own a Understand. Singapore also, when I talk to uh, uh, Sing Singtel, right, they also have a, uh, has a fight there. Like Singtel, they have a, they have a Singtel, yes, a Singtel satellite also, but they are in the same company, right? So when I talk to them, they say, uh, put it this way, if this is really important, uh, uh, what they do is let's do a consultation paper. Let's see how many people actually interested in this plan and this plan and it's based on public interest then we move forward into a certain direction and of course if you look economically uh, mobile would be in that sense mm -hmm. I mean, of course by that sense it's easy to say that mobile would be uh, will win compared to supply in that sense no? mm -hmm. but like you mentioned it's all about location I mean you clearly state that uh, the interference is between the satellite and the station mm -hmm. Whereas in Malaysia, the location of the stations is everywhere, especially when we have it in class assignment, which is unlicensed. unlicensed. Yes, that's it. So they are everywhere. Like I said, one case is, I mean, one example is in petrol pump, petrol station. They're everywhere, not just one. Not just, I mean, you can see one in Sabujaya. And yes, you can see everywhere. So, is there any country that, that, that has the same scenario, but also so many at the point part? And what? Actually, uh, actually, uh, <coughs> Australia, I, I have a slide on that. Uh. Australia, so they carve out a three zone, okay, or 3.5. Those uh, uh, in a desert, okay, mm -hmm. it is freely used, there is no carving. Then the zone in the city, <coughs> like in Melbourne and in the Sydney, so they will carve out uh, those area since the petrol station is actually in the city. Right, maybe we should shut down in the city because of, of the public interest in the city. Uh, 3.5 is used for mobile broadband. Then they start to migrate or uh, doing a zoning. Okay, in Sydney you shouldn't do, and Melbourne you shouldn't do a satellite. The rest of the area you can do a satellite. Uh, then they do a coordination between the mobile operator and satellite uh, with the best interest for satellite operator. If you have an earth station there, whoever owns the, uh, I want to build a new space station, make sure I'm not impacting. Your, your earth station but we need to know where is all the earth station is then I put a ruling saying that in the city the first priority should be for mobile and you should gradually they give them 7 years to slowly move away 7 years, seven years. and they allocate 5.6 to 5.9 for this uh, player since your, your equipment will be retired in a few years I give you 7 years you retire, you move to a new frequency, 5.7. Then you don't build actually this one. Whoever actually owns that frequency on 3.5, win this frequency, 
you start to allocate, uh, identify where is the location that is all these earth stations are, you are not impacting them, then you're okay, you're free to use. So that, that, that is the way on, uh, on, 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 on moving forward. Or else thing, things are not moving, right? If things are not moving, then forever this band cannot be used. Forever we are talking about this band. No, it can be used. Yes, exactly. So we, we, we have to somehow sort out something to make a plan for a few years. Of, of course, it's not today or tomorrow or, 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 or in a year, right? It will take time. <coughs> Get them three, five years to slowly migrate. But first effort, where they actually located and how much they use. So maybe Cyber Jaya is uh, <coughs> should be <coughs> no their main station here is called Uplink. Malaysia case owned by Myasa 3.4 to uh, 4.2 is for downlink. Uh, so they're shooting up as you point uh, uh, use a 5.5. But they also have a receiving station here. I mean, uh, have to do a bit of zoning. <laughs> right. But I mean, if it's not moving here, that means forever we are we are not moving in this direction. If this is the main ecosystem, we are stuck here. Forever, Malaysia will be only talking about this. Full stop. Then it will be in this type of location, the scenario that, of course, 28 gig can be used, la, right? You have a base station, you have a fixed wireless, then they connect down the house, uh, fixed wireless access, and you, you'll be a bit limited in this type of use case. No? <coughs> and of course, eventually, all the low band will be on, on 5G, la, simultaneous. Now we have a system, <coughs> instead of carving 4G harm, 5G harm on, uh, on the shared system, it is possible to do 4G and 5G in the same, same spectrum. But then this one, uh, as we mentioned, maybe, maybe this is the eventual way forward for the next few years for Malaysia. A combine of uh, 28 plus a bit of the farm here, to run something like simultaneous shared spectrum 4G, 5G, uh, <coughs> but but if operator able to do this, it's also good. But the but business case for them is spectrum efficiency is almost the same, right? I can turn it on, but traffic is still growing and I'm still I'm still building site, and uh, I will still go back to building a bit of site on 28, offload a little bit. And use case wise, then we have to do a combination of 28 plus. Right. So some example that <coughs> uh, a lot of countries allocate is 900, they have 1800, 2.1, 2.6, allocate. 700 I think is important, so that uh, we have a wider coverage. But whether it is a 3.5 or 20, then the people will come first, then it depends. Lah. So eventually, the system will be anchored with LTE band. Whether it's a 28 or 3.5, it will be have a dual connectivity. So the mobile phone always will have two legs. One leg always sitting on LTE. Another leg will come on whatever frequency the 5G will have. They call it a dual connectivity. Um, it, it, it will be like that. Then until when you have a low band, 700 or whatever frequency come for 5G, then, like you say, the reliability on 5G everywhere, we have a low band anchor with a high band. Then all this connected <coughs> car or whatever will be more reliable. Right? So you have a standalone, forget about the 4G, I have a standalone 5G. You must have a mid band, you must have a high band, you must have a low band eventually. Uh, if without the low band or whatever, <coughs> still you have one link to connect to the LTE. Then uh, the latency part cannot be addressed. Uh. 
like you say, for the car, we still have to rely on the LTE for, for, for this one. Uh, is it wise, say for example, just to roll out LTE and later change it to uh, the new radio for 700? Looking at this kind of evolution. The, that, that's why in, uh, in most of operator, when they buy the radio, the same equipment should be supporting the new both, both technology from day one. Okay? So when they do like switching like this, you need to be in this type of scenario. First, you do 4G only, 100% 4G. Then you do cost for exist 4G and 5G. You transmit at the same frequency, just puncture a few time slot. Then eventually, it will be call exist, lah, right? So in, in my in my chart here, it's not 100% 5G, but it will be call exist. Yeah. Then you are anticipating GSM to still be around for quite some time. <coughs> GSM, GSM, okay. GSM put it this way. Okay. Um, now a lot of operators doing shared spectrum. Shared spectrum means, uh, let's say you have twenty megahertz of spectrum. Um, LTE use twenty, but literally they actually use eighteen. So there is a left and right. There are some gap band. Actually, people actually steal it for use uh, to use a GSM not impacting the LTE performance. Uh, then when it comes to the really shutdown of GSM, again, <clears throat> whether the government enforce it to shut down, like Singapore, or else no one will dare to shut down unless Telstra. Telstra shut it down, they lose subscriber. AT&T <coughs> shut it down first, before T-Mobile shut down in 2020, based on their report, they churn 20%, the total churn, 20% of it because of the shutdown of the GSM. So there is an expected churn if one operator actually shut it down first. Oh, oh, there is a churn. No, no. It, then the, the business case will be whether you can sustain this out of churn while giving you the benefit of shutdown of <coughs> the GSM, you reduce your operation and maintenance cost. So I don't need the 2G at all. I save this much of capex. Even though I churn small percentage, it's okay. Big enough like at and okay. Telstra, okay. In Malaysia, I think uh, GSM subscribers still a lot. It's, 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 it's risky to shut it down. Even you have a 5-10% left GSM subscriber, no one will dare to shut it down yet. You will cause a churn. But eventually, like I say, la, if an uh, operator can coexist like that, then they won't go to the, the point of sales like control station or taxi, change their meter. Because uh, this one will, uh, subscriber, we can ask uh, to change the handphone. To change all this, uh, the control station is costing money. So if I can just uh, stay a little bit here, people won't change unless the government say shut it down. Then everyone take years to shut it down. We have a lot of sharing from Singtel and Telstra. Uh, they also organize a forum. Their experience, how they actually shut it down, step by step. No, <laughs> yeah. but if an immigrant, that's uh, 8, 8 million. Now. <laughs> well, yeah, but immigrant. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they are the biggest uh, paying subscriber. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is my last slide. So I mean, evolution towards the five G, standardization, technology validation done, right? But what is uh, next? Few three step because the spectrum is important. Uh. But spectrum, like I say, after you allocate, still industry application need to be there. If there is no industry <coughs> application, you have the spectrum, nobody will use it. You will naturally fall back to use a spectrum to provide data, internet, right? That's it. All this uh, factory and all this will, will, will not fly. Of course, the evolution from 4G to 5G, like I say, the equipment you buy need to be ready for 5G. Then you save your, save your 
Sigur. Hai. 5G handset, uh, not yet. The first uh, we saw in the market, fixed wireless uh, terminal. There is one, two vendors that announced they have. Now. That is running in which vendors? Which frequency? Good point. Yes, Twenty. 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 Right, you have an event, you ask the operator to showcase, like Indonesia government, they push Telkom Cell, Excel to set up some booth to showcase what, huh? mm. yeah. what, what the 5G can do. After that, they extend for a year, let's do a collaboration between the industry, huh? do some, some. they have to move on that direction, or else things will not move. Huh? 3.5 also, I have a lot of headache with them, right? Yeah, because because uh, they have lots of satellites. Mm. They have a lot of satellites, so they move on 28. That's why they, that's, you, you don't know what they're doing. Mm. Mm. I'm not saying that the... That's why they're accommodating <coughs> you in the 28. Uh, actually, we are not. <coughs> <coughs> so 28, they start first, then after that, slowly, Mid band, uh, not to say 3.5, uh, mid band, uh, somewhere, uh, somewhere mid band. Yeah. Yeah. Like China, they're taking something here. Maybe a uh, operator asked me, where is the gold mine? If 3.4, 3.5 is stuck, where is the gold mine? I said, maybe this is a gold mine. <laughs> it might be, right? If China doing something here, maybe. I don't know. But if you look at how many operators interested, it's only China and Japan. Whether you dare to allocate something, I also don't, don't dare to tell you, hey, Malaysia will go on this direction. I don't dare. Mm. Yeah, China, China is this one. PBDR band 27 which is on if if fifty. Keep it young. But that four 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 nine is also with uh, some countries are talking about PDR. So that's why if you look, I think if you look in the best between four 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 four, four nine four eight, those are the only countries that have their name identified in the ready right in the last video I've seen. So that's why <coughs> before three six of course, and then three six seven those are the two. Because you see, there's a couple of countries in the ship pack, but the ship is not one of them. Yeah, so I think the limitation is because the legacy. Exactly. Like 2024, you got radio location there. Right. We don't want to put our kids so far. That, that's why I, I, that, that's why I, I, during my presentation, I never recommend the ship pack. Okay. Yeah. 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 Y
I have to be very open here as a discussion, <laughs> right? Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a consultant, I'm not selling anything. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Euro, right? <laughs> uh, one more thing. Um, yeah. uh, I noticed when you highlight on the speed, especially LTE, where you didn't include um, other features like navigation, how um, my move can take so gig, after that you get 10 gig, what is that? Mac is nothing. Five Mac is just uh, at the self edge. But you say, oh, I, I tested one gig. It's actually you have a branding. Uh, you have this one. But then I come back to the question: 4G, you deliver one gig, the three band. You cat 16 UE, you do four by four on 1800, four by four on uh, 2.6, plus two by two on 900, for example. You can do one gig. Exactly. So the cost to deliver the one gig in 4G is much more higher compared to providing a one gig in 5G with a single radio. I put it this way, right? Um, so you calculate the distance. You know, what kind of coverage that you can cover? Yeah. That's why, that's why when it comes to a speed, um, 4G and 5G, okay, you get the same speed. Yeah. But then uh, after the speed, it go back to the cost. I provide you the one gig, one gig of peak with this cost compared to five G continuous spectrum. It's good, right? Yeah. Unless you have a continuous bandwidth for one operator in Thailand, DTAC partner with TOT, sixty meg of a spectrum on two point three. Cheap, cheap. You don't need a five G. You already achieve. 60 meg of continuous 2.3, a lot of spectrum with one radio, cost per bit will further go down. So in order for Malaysia, let's say, you want to reduce the cost by half or whatever, relocate a bit of spectrum, each operator having a larger chunk of spectrum per band, the cost will go down. If you locate a bit here, a bit there, I need to deploy one radio on 2.6, one radio on 2.3, one radio on 800, the cost will be everywhere. Okay, guys. Okay, right. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, um, before we go for a break, maybe you can continue your discussion. Uh, Dr. Nasruddin, you want to say something? <laughs> coming and sharing with us the, the vision yeah. on 5G. I think it's a good discussion.